Hi everyone, my name is Ayush and in this video we are going to learn about how to create a live whiteboard through which uh, you can draw anything and that will be visible live on all, all the clients that are connected to that server. And we are going to learn this project from scratch. And there are multiple features like you can control the width, you can change the colors, you can even erase it, you can control the width of the eraser as well and all. So let us quickly start this project. So let's start by creating a new folder. So let us quickly create a new folder. Let us name it as whiteboard. Now coming, let us open this folder with uh, VS Code. So to open any folder directly in VS Code, you can have this shortcut. You have to come to the address bar and you have to write CMD. Then you have to write code space dot and this folder will be directly pinned through uh, VS Code. So let us move on to the files. What should be the file structure and how to start with it. So you can see I have got this dot DIST folder. So you don't need to bother about this. This is a, a folder that is created by VS Code, I guess. And this is none of our use. So let's start by creating a file called app.js, which is going to be our server. It's going to take a little bit of time. So um, meanwhile, let us quickly discuss like what should be the project but a workflow and all. So to create this project, uh, the prerequisites are, you must need uh, to know a little bit of JavaScript, as well as you need to know a little bit of Node.js, as well as you need to know a little bit of HTML. So, and we do need uh, two or three modules that we are going to discuss. Just give me a second. I don't know why I'm getting like, okay, got the terminal. So let's start with npm init minus y and let us quickly initialize our project. And I have added minus y flag because I don't want uh, to add values by myself, like what should be the package and all. It is, uh, you could see in the package.json file, I'm getting all the values by default. And let us quickly add a script. npm start. And I have already have a module called nodemon, which is globally installed. You could write node uh, app.js, but here I'm writing nodemon app.js because that refreshes our uh, server. Whenever our server is going to make any changes, it is automatically going to restart our server. Now coming to the app.js part, we do need some of the modules. So let us quickly install some of the modules. The first module is Express. The second, it's actually Express is a framework. Uh, so we are going to install this framework as a package using NPM. So I'm installing Express. Then I'm install, I'm going to install uh, WebSockets. So let us wait for a while. We will install WebSocket the coming part. So initially, let's quickly install Express and then EJS. EJS is for the front end part. And let us quickly, uh, meanwhile, it's installing, let us quickly require it. So const express equal to require express. So I'm getting this express uh, package in this express variable. Now I'm creating uh, an application, which is going to be an instance of this express. Then I'm going to uh, make my server listen on a port, say 3000. And there should be a callback function. So if we are, we are getting any error, then console.log error. Like what should, what is the error we are getting from? Okay. Pardon me. Okay, perfect. Else, if we are not getting any error, then I'm going to do console.log server is running on port say 3000. Let us quickly save it. And let us do npm start. And I guess. When I'm going to write npm start, it is automatically going to write nodem on app.js for me. Let us wait for a while. Meanwhile, I'm going to create, okay, 
I'm getting an error. Okay, it should be start, not npm start. Now, if I'm going to do npm start, I'm going to get nodemon app.js and it is going to start our server. Let us create a default route, app.get, and this is going to be our default route. And let us quickly add two parameters, which are request response. And in the response, I'm going to, for the testing purpose, right now, I'm going to send a string, like hello. Okay, my server is running on the port 3000. You could see in my terminal, like my server is running on port 3000. So let me quickly open my browser and let us quickly find out like what exactly our server is returning as a response. So localhost 3000 is going to be our default URL and in the default route, I'm going to get hello. All right. Now let us move to the uh, EJS part, to the canvas part. So I'm going to create at first, I need to set the EJS part. So I'm going to set view engine. And I'm going to give EJS as its value. Okay. So I'm setting the view engine is going to be EJS. And to use EJS, you must have a folder called views. And inside this views folder, I'm going to create a file called uh, admin.ejs like all right, and I'm going to have another file called client.ejs. All right, perfect. So, and in the default route from now, I'm going to, I'm not going to send hello as a response. I'm going to render this ejs page, which is our admin.ejs. As a response. So let us quickly refresh it. And you could see I'm getting this admin.ejs. Right now I don't have anything inside this file. Let us quickly add a boilerplate. EJS is almost similar to HTML, but in EJS, we can have a JavaScript code inside this HTML. So I am going to write uh, administrator. This is going to be our administrator side. And in the body app for the testing purpose, I'm going to write H1 Ayush. Let us quickly see whether I'm getting Ayush or not. Yeah, you could see I'm getting Ayush. So let us quickly create a canvas. So to create a canvas, you must need to have a canvas tag. And let's quickly give it an ID. For our convenience, we are just keeping the ID same as the name of canvas. And inside it, we can write your browser does not support canvas. Say for an example, if somebody is going to try to open this website in a browser in which canvas is not supported, then it is going to display this message. Otherwise, let us quickly move on to the JavaScript part. So I'm adding a script tag and I'm going to grab this canvas. So to grab this canvas, let us quickly create a variable called canvas and I'm going to grab its value, say canvas. All right. I'm going to create another variable called context. So just let it be CTX and, and I'm going to set its value canvas that get con text 2d so i am going to grab the 2d context of this canvas i'm going to assign it to a variable called ctx and we are going to use a lot of things in this canvas so let's start with uh, drawing part so we must need to have some event listeners, like if somebody is going to resize it. At first, let us quickly add a height and width. So I am going to set canvas dot height. 
But before that, let us quickly add a border to the canvas as well. So I'm going to add style tag. I'm going to use inline CSS border uh, set to px solid black. So you could see by default, I'm going to get this size of canvas, but I want the size of this canvas uh, as similar to the width of our window. So how are we going to get that? So for that, uh, we are going to set canvas dot height equal to window dot inner height and canvas dot width equal to window dot inner width. Okay, let's see it now. Uh, I have canvas dot height equal to window dot inner height and canvas dot width equal to uh, window dot inner width perfect yeah you could see now like i am getting the height of and the width of the canvas similar to the size of our window but you could see the size is not responsive so we must need to have a event listener for that so I'm going to write document dot. Okay, we could write window dot add event window dot add event listener. And if somebody is going to resize the canvas, then I'm going to call this callback function. And in this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the same thing height and width and for the height part i'm not going to keep height exactly as the height of our browser i'm going to keep uh, uh one by seventh part uh exactly seven by tenth part of the height and similarly here as well i'm going to write into 0 0.7 this is going to set the height of this canvas seven by ten times of the height and uh just give me a second Okay, you could see now the height and the width of this canvas is responsive. If somebody is going to change the size of the window or going to resize it, the height and width of this canvas is changing accordingly. Now, coming to the next part, which is about drawing part, we have got this canvas here in which uh, this canvas is responsive. Now we must have. Uh, the drawing functionality. So for the drawing functionality, we must need to have uh, some of the features. Like I'm going to write uh, some event listeners. The first event listener is going to be uh, if somebody is going to keep his mouse button down while visiting the canvas. So we have to start the drawing. So for the drawing part, let us create a variable called paint equal to I'm going to set its value false. So I've created a variable called pen and its initial value is going to be false. And I am going to add event listener mouse down. Then I'm going to call this function to start draw. Similarly, I'm going to add another event listener. And if somebody is going to leave his mouse button, then uh, this in the draw function is going to be called. And if somebody is going to move his mouse, mouse move, if somebody is going to move his mouse while visiting canvas. So in this case, I'm going to call a function called draw. And let us quickly write this start draw in the draw and draw function. So for the start draw function, let us quickly write a function called start draw. And this function is basically going to set this pint variable true. Similarly, I'm going to create a function called int draw. This is going to set this pint variable false. And I'm going to have a function called draw. This is the main function that is going to perform the drawing functionality. 
so f u n c t i so i have i have this draw function so in the draw function what i need to do is at first i'm going to check if paint variable is true or false if somebody is keeping his mouse button down then he would be able to draw otherwise he won't be able to draw anything on the canvas so for this case i'm going to check if paint how i'm going to check if paint variable is false then i'm going to return i'm not going to draw anything otherwise if paint variable is true then it uh, we would come up down and in this function i'm going to write uh, at first i'm going to how i'm going to get the latitude or longitude or you say the coordinates it's similar to latitude and longitude in the map the coordinates of our mouse cursor so for that we need to pro, uh, pass an additional argument called event and uh, at first i'm going to draw a line so we need a this ctx variable dot line to is a function in the canvas and uh, for the x and y coordinate i have to pass event dot client x and event dot client y and i'm going to do ctx dot stroke you can see like how exactly our web page is looking right now so you could see if i am able to draw anything but if i click somewhere say here or here so you could see uh, i'm getting a straight line connected to that so i don't need this so and we are getting very sharp corners so to resolve all these things at first what we need to do is uh, we have to set the line cap before drawing so i'm going to write ctx dot line there's a there's a method called line cap line cap and i'm going to set its value to round and every time if somebody is going to stroke i'm going to break it using begin ctx dot begin path is a function using this function i'm going to break it and i'm going to move that so just copy paste this line and i am going to move my mouse cursor to the x position and y position good now coming back to uh, the in the draw function we need to add some modification in our in the draw function as well so in the in the draw function when i'm ending anything then i will write ctx dot begin path like right? it should break and start from there now you could see i will be getting exactly whatever i'm drawing here on the canvas canvas is an element of html and you could draw anything in the canvas like nowadays most of the games are there in the canvas graphs are there in the canvas and all so you could see i am able to draw anything here but it's on the client side and it's on the front end it's not something related that you are drawing here and somebody else sitting some uh, using some uh, somebody else computer would be able to see whatever you are drawing here so for that we need to connect this a uh, front end to a back end and our back end is going to send whatever events taking place on one side our back end is going to show it on the other side as well so for that at first let us quickly add some more functionalities like right now we are able to draw it but we are not able to change the width we are not able to change the color and all so for these things we must uh, need to add some more elements so come back to the canvas and i'm going to add some more elements at first for the color so the for the color part i'm going to let us quickly find this canvas i'm going to add a diff for the color part and i'm going to set height width and background color so let us quickly add a style attribute style 
at first i'm going to add a height say uh, 50 pixel i'm going to set width say 50 pixel and i'm going to add display property to display all these stuff in a single line inline block inline block and i'm going to add one more functionality which is about margin so quickly add a margin say 5 pixel as well as i'm going to add a background color it's most important the background color is going to be red let us quickly save it and see how it's going to look so you could see i'm getting a red color here similarly i'm going to copy paste this line and i'm going to do this for green and blue as well you could add as much color as you wish so i'm here just adding three colors red green and the third one is going to be blue and you could see i'm going to get three colors all right and i'm going to add a slider as well so to add a slider i must have in type equal to range and i'm going to add uh, the max and min mean value of this slider so the max is going to be 20 and the min is going to be 1 the maximum and minimum value of the slider and i'm going to add a event listener like on input there should be a function that has to be called so the function is going to be change width and okay so this is going to be our function change width that has to be called when somebody is going to change the slider okay and let us quickly add a id as well so i'm going to add a id id equal to slider and i'm going to add a value as well so default value is going to be 3 and I'm going to add a br tag if you wish you can have this br tag. otherwise it's not compulsory to have a br tag so you could see now i'm getting a slider here as well but I need an eraser as well. So for the eraser part, we can have its color as white. So for the eraser part, I'm just going to copy this same thing. And in the background color, instead of using, uh, I cannot show white color as, as a background color for the eraser. So I'm going to grab an eraser icon that, uh, that I already have there uh, in my PC. You can have it from the description. So I'm going to create a folder called public. Let me create a folder called public and I'm going to keep my eraser file here. In the app.js, I must need to tell my backend application like uh, this uh, public folder is going to be static folder and you could use resources from this folder. So I'm going to set app dot app dot uh, use press dot static and i am going to set the absolute path of this folder now i have added absolute path of this folder now coming to the admin dot ejs instead of this background color i need this icon so I guess I do already have this icon in my PC. Let me quickly figure it out like where exactly is this icon. Uh, okay, I think I don't have the icon here in this folder. So I must grab it from somewhere. So somewhere from the internet. So let me quickly search for erase. So you could skip this step like i'm going to delete this public folder like i don't need it i'm going to grab the image from the internet and similarly i could erase this line of code like app.use express.static from my code i don't need it anymore coming to the uh, admin.ejs file i'm going to search for 
razor icon and i guess i'm going to get it suppose for example i need this one so i'm going to right click on it and you could see it's still loading let us wait for a while and there's an option copy image address okay and for the eraser part i am going to I'm going to uh, add a background image. Instead of background color, I'm going to add background image. And here you need to provide a URL parameter and you could paste the URL of the image. So I have added it. Let, us, let me quickly save it and you could see now I'm going to get a eraser here. But the height and width of the eraser is not matching. So for that thing, we must to have the height and width property. So for that, we can have this background size. So background size is going to be five pixel and five pixel. Let us quickly save it. And now you'd be able to see. But you can see I'm getting so many razors here so i have to stop the background repeat property as well okay oh uh, i must have the height and width 50 pixel instead of 5 pixel i'm going to have this 50 pixel then i would be having okay you could see i'm getting an eraser icon as well and I'm going to add event listeners on each one of them. Like if somebody is going to click on click, then I'm going to call a function, say the name of the function is going to be change. And I'm going to pass value red to this function. So you could see, I have written a function change which is going to call this function change if i'm going to click on this div this is going to call this function change with the parameter red similarly for the green this is going to call this function change with the parameter green similarly for this one if i'm going to click on click and this is going to call this function change with the parameter the parameter is going to be blue and for the eraser part, it is going to call this with white. But still, I don't have this these functions. Like I don't have this red uh, change functions as well as I don't have this change width function. So let us quickly write change function and change width function. So for the change function, let us quickly write this change function. And this is just going to change the context. CTX dot stroke style. There, there is a property called stroke style. And that's going to set its value to value. The value that we are getting from the parameter. Let us quickly check it out whether this is working or not. So you could see now I'm drawing in black. Now I'm drawing in blue. Now I'm drawing in green. Now I'm drawing in red. And if I'm using eraser, it is erasing, but still I cannot control the width. So for the width, you could see I have a function called change width. So let us quickly write the function, function called change width. And this is going to change the width of the uh, eraser or R pencil. So for the width function, let us quickly write this width function so at first for the width function we could write ctx dot line width is a is a property so we are going to write ctx dot line width and this value is going to be document dot get get element by id and the id of our slider was slider dot value the live slider value is going to be set on you could see if i'm going to change the value i am i'm able to draw 
something in more darker shade and i could erase it as well if i'm going to this is a complete black color and i can erase it as well i can even control the size of the eraser right now the size of the eraser is this and again if i change the size of the eraser has been changed okay so coming to the next thing which is about about sending all this on the server now coming to the server part so server part is going to be a little bit complex and we must need to have some of the modules for the server part but before that let's quickly have this client.ejs part as well the client.ejs part is going to be almost same but we are not going to have this uh, stroke style and all these things like we are not going to have these these event listeners as well because this is only going to be on one side say this is the server side somebody is going to draw on one side and it is going to be live visible on some another side but before that we must need to have some configurations so let us quickly dispose the server and let us quickly install a module called ws so ws module is for the web sockets and we are going to use web sockets to create our server and to send all the data to the server it's taking some time let us wait wait for a while meanwhile let us come to this app.js and i am going to require ws equal to require ws and we must need to create a server as well now so for the server part how uh, uh, you need to have this let us create a variable called wss stands for web socket server and i am going to have this new ws dot server and we must need to provide a port number say the port number is going to be port is going to be 5000 so w socket server web socket server is going to run on the port called 5000 and uh, let us quickly test it out i'm going to write wss which stand for web socket server dot on i'm going to add a event listener like if somebody is going to connect with our server then i will be getting him it as a socket so i'm passing particular client as a socket soc socket okay and i'm going to simply write console dot log new client connected all right so if somebody is going to connect with our uh, web socket server then it is going to show new client connected now come to the admin.ejs part let us quickly have a connection with our web socket server so to to have a connection with web socket server from the front end what you need to do is uh, you need to have a web socket protocol on your browser as well so for that thing you need to have say let us create a variable web socket equal to we are going to create a variable called socket and let us have this variable on the top like we are going to use this variable many times so let us have this variable at the top okay and after having this variable on the top let us quickly have a socket connection so for the socket connection part you must need to have uh, the web socket so web socket let web socket equal to new web socket and let us give it an id http no you don't need to have http now you are going to have web socket protocol local host colon 5000 because our web socket server is running on 5000 let us quickly start our server so i'm going to write npm start okay so you could see my server is running now if i'm going to refresh this you could see i'm getting new client connected because i am getting connected every time if i'm going to open a new tab and if i'm going to add local host so you could see i uh, each of the client is going to be connected as socket so now coming again back to the app.js we must need to have some properties linked with this socket 
So for the socket part, how are we going to add some of the properties to a particular socket? Each one of the socket we are getting as a parameter. So we are going to uh, write some of the event listeners in the socket. Like I'm going to write socket dot one message. If somebody is going to send a message to the socket, then a function is going to be called and let it be an anonymous function. So this function is going to be called. Uh, in the function parameter, I'm going to get the message that that is being sent by a particular socket. And I'm going to send the message same to each one of them. So I'm going to write wss.clients dot for each as a method. All the sockets or the client that are connected are going to be uh, having this clients array. wss.clients is an array in which we have information about all the clients that are connected. And I'm going to send message to each one of the client that is connected. So at first, I don't need to send the message to the same client. So except this one, I'm going to send the message that I am getting from a particular client. So I am sending this to all the clients. Whatever message I am getting from a one client, I am going to send the message to all the clients that are connected to my server, except itself. And message dot data. The the data part of the message that we are getting from a particular client. So we are done with our WebSocket server. So this was just the WebSocket part. Whatever we are getting from one client, we are going to send it back to all the clients that are connected to our WebSocket server, except except which one? The particular socket, the particular client who is sending the message. Okay. Now let us quickly come to the front end part again. So coming back to the front end part, say uh, admin dot ejs was our front end. So let us quickly write a logic as well. So for the logic part, we must need to send some information now, like what should be then for what, what the color we are using right now, what is the width and all. So for this one, what is the width of the line that we are drawing right now? So for each one of the part, for, for if somebody is going to start drawing, then we are going to create a variable called info. And its value is going to be, there are a lot of key and values. So its width is going to be ctx, ctx dot line width. Its style is going to be ctx dot stroke style. Okay, you must need to have a comma when you're creating an object. All the key value pairs are separated by commas. So I've added a style. Then I have add, I'm going to add a X, which is going to be event dot client X. And I'm going to have a Y. Event dot client Y is going to be the Y coordinate. As well as we must need to provide a color as well, like which color from which color. We already have provided a color. Now we are going to provide a page, like right now what we are doing. So if somebody has clicked his mouse button down, so we are setting the pint. I'm adding a pint value and I'm setting its value to one. So these are some value that I am going to send if somebody has to start drawing. So how are you going to send it? Just you have to write ws.send. And it is going to send this information to the all the clients that are connected to our WebSocket server. And I'm going to send this info variable. Cool. Similarly, I'm going to copy paste this line for the rest of two as well. If somebody had stopped a drawing, so I'm going to send it. But in the when somebody has stopped drawing, I'm going to set this print variable to zero. And if somebody is drawing as well, so I'm going to send this information and I'm going to send the print value to two. So we are done.
now i am sending all the information to the web socket but right now we must need to have a client route as well so this was our default admin route so let us quickly change some configuration if somebody is going to open the default route it's going to be client.ejs and if somebody is going to open admin route then it is going to be admin.ejs right now we don't have anything inside this client.ejs file so this is the client.ejs file and let us quickly search for admin route so this is the admin route whatever the admin is drawing here this should be visible on the client side but we don't have anything inside this client so let us quickly copy paste all the code that is there in the admin side on the client side as well because it is going to almost similar just we have to remove this event list listeners like we don't need to have these event listeners and all in the client side we must have this connection with the web socket server as well the client should also be connected to the web socket server then uh it would be able to send some message message now coming to the client side what we need to do is just let it the, let it be the functions uh let us quickly remove these things like we don't need these things the information is being sent from the server to the client now not from the client to the server so we have end draw draw and start door. in the client side i am just writing a simple logic and this logic is going to be very simple very 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 simple the logic is like if we are getting a message from the server then we have to adjust all the properties accordingly so how are we going to do it so to do it we just need to have a web socket server that we already have here uh this is our web socket server and we must need to have this if i'm getting a message ws dot on message i'm getting a message from somewhere then i'm going going to call this function and this function is going to do a lot of stuff so the first thing in the function i'm going to get the message as the parameter now and exact value of message is going to be message dot data so i'm getting in the function i'm getting getting message as the parameter now i am going to write at first i am going to have this info variable again equal to json dot parse because we have converted the message into a string and here we are again converting this uh, this string into an object in the info and this is going to be message dot data the actual message string that we are coming we are again converting it back to the info object that was there on the server side and i am simply going to write info dot print equal to equal to 0 then it is going to call intro if info dot print value is going to be 1 then it it is going to call a uh, start row and if Info dot int value is going to be uh, say two. Then it is going to call the draw function. I guess it's going to call the draw function. But for the draw function, we must need to have some of the features. At first, we are going to set ctx dot line width. and this ctx dot line width is going to be info dot width whatever we are getting width from the server similarly for the height i am going to set ctx dot stroke style and the stroke style is going to be info dot i guess uh, info dot style style was the key that i was passing to the server and similarly uh, for the drawing part i am going to write draw calling this draw with info.x at info.y let me check like this was the value these are the values now x and y i'm sending it to the server and 
the draw function is being called and we are done let us remove these stuffs like we don't need the sliders and the color selectors on the client side and this is the client side and this is the server side you could see whatever i'm drawing here you could see it's not visible on the client side let me quickly inspect it why exactly it's not visible we aren't getting anything in the console if on the server side i am drawing anything so we need to do a little bit of modification on the draw function as well so i'm just setting the x and y coordinates and instead of using writing event x i'm just writing x and i'm writing y similarly here as well i'm just writing x and y the information that we are getting from from another server Okay, this line was for just for the testing purpose. Let us quickly save it and let us quickly figure it out. Like, is it working or not? Like right now I'm drawing something, and I guess it's still not visible. If I'm drawing something here, let me refresh it. You could see if I'm drawing here, it's like visible on the client side. Let us quickly test it in a different browser as well. So this is going to be an Edge browser. This is the client side, and let me quickly open the Edge browser. It's going to take some time. So this is the Edge browser. I'm going to write localhost three thousand localhost slash admin. This is the admin side, and this is the client side. And whatever the admin is going to draw there, you could see the width, the color, the erasure. And all it's visible live on the client side. So this is all about this project, and this project uh, is from intermediate level Node JS, and you must have basic information about web sockets and basic information about like how exactly the sockets work and how to create a canvas and how to work with canvas. So that's all for this project. Thank you.